we came out to worship him on today. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and sing, Lord, I worship you.
everybody. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands right where we are. Let's give God praise. Let's give him honor. Let's give him glory for what he has done. He has brought us this far. If you're watching this video, he has kept you alive for another day, for another blessed day in this world, God. We cannot take anything for granted in this season, but we have to thank God for everything that he has been doing for us. So God, we thank you. We honor you. We praise you. We just thank you for being a comforter. We thank you for forgiving us in our sins. We thank you for being so gracious and merciful to us. God, we thank you for being a God that we can trust, a God that, that, that has our best interests at heart, that even when we don't know our, what our will is, you know the will for our lives. So God, we thank you for being such a great father. And we thank you for your grace, that even when we, we did wrong, that even when we sinned, that even, even when we fell from your grace, you still picked us up and you still love us. Right now, somebody is going through a mist of depression, a mist of guilt, feeling like God has left them alone, feeling like God has, has, has stopped answering their prayers. But God, right now, speak to that person right where they are and let them know that they have been forgiven. Let them know that they are loved. You said, if you confess your sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all righteousness, unrighteousness. God, we thank you for your son. We thank you for your son that even we couldn't, we can't pay for our sins, but you sent your son to pay the price for our sins. And th John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Help us in the midst of this pandemic. Many people are worried about finances, jobs. Many people are worried how they're going to pay their bill, how they're going to eat. But God, I know you to be a provider. I know you to make ways out of no ways. That you will cause people to bless us that we don't even know. You will cause pe strangers to bless us that we don't even know. You will bless us even in our season of doubt and worry. So God, help us to know that you're a provider. Because our word says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him will I trust. We can trust you, God. We can trust you. Even when people have left us, even when people have stabbed us in the back, you was there all along by our side, loving us and protecting us and comforting us. And I pray for the youth all over the world right now that they begin to, to seek you even more, that the fire begins to come up within them to do the things of God. Because you told us to work while it's day because at night, no man can work. Help us to do the work that is necessary so that we can see the results that we wanna see. Because not only must we have faith, but we have to also have faith and works. Faith without works is dead. So give us the push to do your work. Give us the push to do what you have called us to do and our purpose for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, he deserves our praise. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and lift those hands right where you at and open up your mouths and give him glory for he deserves it he deserves it on today 
Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Glory. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, say, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh. and lift up your voice and say you deserve it Say it belongs to you, Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and give him glory because he deserves it. He deserves it on today. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and bless him. Give God the praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. He's worthy to be praised. Somebody that's watching that loves the Lord on today, just go ahead and worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Let him know how good he is. Come on. He's in the room right now. The presence of the Lord is here. Just reach up and grab him. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted up. And for that, we are glad. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord on today? Come on, just go ahead and praise him right where you are. Those that are watching, just begin to worship him. Let him know how good he is. Just begin to lift him up. Faith Family Church, FFC, come on, lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Let him know he's good and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And for that, we are so glad. We are so grateful. And we are so honored to be in his presence on today. I'm so glad that you were able to tune in um, to this worship experience, this virtual church experience on today. Amen. I'm so glad to be in the land of the living. Amen. I'm so glad for the activities of my limbs on today, Lord God, with so much that is happening in the world. We are just grateful just for another day that the Lord has made. And we are determined to rejoice and be glad in it. I wish you would rejoice on today. Hallelujah. I wish you would go ahead and rejoice because he's good. And he's worthy to be praised. Amen. I just want to get a few minutes of your time. We want to get right into the word of the Lord. We thank God for the singing. Amen. For the worship that had already went forth. Amen. We thank God for the prayer. Amen. We thank God for all that we have experienced already. Amen. God is good. That he is so awesome. Amen. We cannot say how good he is because it's too great to even articulate. But we just, all we can say is, God, you're good. You're faithful. You're great. Hallelujah. And for that, we are so glad. Amen. I want to get right into the word of the Lord. Amen. Again, I want to welcome you here to Faith Family Church, where we're not just a church, but we're a family. And we are really dedicated to seeing faith and family being restored. Hallelujah. And today, or today, I want to really talk to you from the subject of vision. Amen. Those that are watching, I want to talk to you from the subject of vision. First, I want to just explain uh, for those that are new to this channel, or new to this live, of who, what Faith Family Church is and what we are about. I just want to um, just tell you more about the vision of our church and what we set out to do, our mission and our vision. Amen. And it's going to be in line with the word that we are going to minister on today. Amen. For Faith Family Church, was, um, um, soon we want to do some more great things even throughout this pandemic but we want to just share with you uh, what we are about hallelujah amen our job amen and our mission and our vision is to impact the world for jesus and by introducing salvation and restoration especially targeted to the family unit Hallelujah. We really feel we've been called to bring healing and restoration to the family unit. And what does that mean? What does that mean when I say we're not just a church, but we're a family? What it really means is that we want to be able to touch one person at a time. Amen. We want to touch one person at a time. That means the mother, the father, the sister, the brother, the aunt, the uncle. Amen. The children. Amen. We want to be able to minister to the whole family and so that it can be restored and healed, especially in these last and evil days. Somebody shout glory to God. Amen. We want to be able to address the needs of each individual soul, every one that God had created to stimulate growth, development, and healing. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is what we are about. Amen. And today I want to talk about vision because the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. Somebody shout glory to God. Amen. I want to turn, I want you to turn your Bibles to Proverbs 29 and 18 or just follow along with me. We're going to be reading from Proverbs 29 and 18 and it reads a familiar scripture. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is 
he. Somebody just that are watching on the screen, just type in vision, God. I need vision, Lord. I need vision in these last days. I need to make sure that if I don't, if I lose anything, that I do not lose my vision. Somebody shout hallelujah. The scripture says, when there is no vision, the people perish. In other words, the message Bible says, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Let me say that again. The Message Bible in Proverbs 29, 18 says, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Don't you know that we need to see what God is doing even through turmoil, even through the challenges of life, even through despair, we cannot find ourselves losing our vision. Because the difference between goals and vision is man set goals, but God gives vision. I said so many times, what is worse than being blind? And that's being able to see physically, but have no vision. Without vision, you are handicapped in the spirit. Whenever there is vision, there is provision because you can see it before you come into it. Somebody shout glory to God. So God, he, he has a way of sharing privileged information to those that are seeking him, that are staying connected to him, and that are continually developing a prayer life. He gives us vision. And vision is necessary because life has a way of blinding you. Life has a way of putting the blinders on your eyes where you only see darkness and you cannot seem to see light. But in the midst of a dark surrounding, God has a way of allowing you to see a vision of something good. He has a way of giving you vision in the midst of lack and in the midst of, of despair, in the midst of brokenness. Sometimes all you have is your vision. That you saw what God has shown you and he has revealed some things to you that you may not have even talked to anyone about. But the fact that he revealed it to you and the fact that you have vision, it keeps you moving forward. It keeps you going in the direction that he has for you. It keeps you from giving up. Because we all need vision. We've got to start seeing things the way God sees it. We must develop a godly perspective. Because don't you know when we have a fleshly perspective, we live a life of hopelessness. When we have a fleshly perspective, we live a, a life full of uncertainty. When we have a fleshly perspective or a natural perspective or a carnal mind, then we only see death. But when we can get some vision from God, he allows us the strength that we need to make it through the darkness into the marvelous light. We must develop a godly perspective. We must look at things from God's eyes. And that's why it's important that you connect yourself to a visionary. Somebody shout visionary. You gotta connect yourself to a visionary so that you can have some kind of light in the midst of the darkness so that you can get through the tunnel that seems to be closing in on you. There has to be some vision around you or a visionary that you're connected to that keeps you moving forward. Don't you know how we see things can be distorted? And we look at things through a fleshly eye, and it may not be what it looks like. Don't you know the carnal mind equals carnal eyes? If you think carnally, then you're going to see carnally. So you got to stop visualizing yourself failing or losing or dying or, or falling. But you got to start asking God to show you what he wants you to see. Don't you know that you got to see things through his eyes? So that you can continue to have hope. Start asking God, am I looking at this the wrong way? Or am I looking at the wrong things? Am I paying attention to the things that keep me negative? Am I, am I paying attention to the things that keep me down and out? Or am I looking at it from God's perspective and I see that he has a plan? What you see is what you get. If you keep looking for something wrong, you're always going to find it. 
If you keep looking for something negative, you're always going to find it. But don't you know God can be blessing in the midst of negativity? God can be doing some miracles in the midst of, 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 of despair. God can be doing some great things in the midst of turmoil, but you cannot see it. That's why we need vision. That's why we need to ask God to help us to focus and, and look at the right things and, and pay attention to the right things so that we can stay in a positive mindset and we can move through our challenges and come out with victory. We want to be on the winning side, but there, there's some things that we have to do and there's some ways that we have to look at it so that we can stay in our right minds. If you keep seeing defeat, you always get defeated. If you have to, if you, if you, you can't, you can't just get ready to be blessed. You got to always be preparing because when the blessing comes, you can't try to get ready when the blessing comes. You have to already be ready. You have to start looking at things the right way. You can't wait till things come before you. You have to be ready when it happens. When you are a visionary, you got to be willing to even look like a fool to people because you know what God has shown you. And when God shows you something, you can't mind yourself what people are saying or how people are looking at you. You got to be able to step out on faith and know that God had given you a vision. And he had given you a vision for a purpose. And some people might say, well, that, well that, that's too risky. Man. You shouldn't do that. But you got to know what God has shown you so that you can move in the things that God has for you. When you are a person of vision, you, you see even if nobody else will see it. You ever been around people that they always talk negative, always act negative, always in negative situations, and it seems like negativity follows them? It's their perspective that keeps them in a negative place. But if you have vision, you have to see past the trouble that's in front of you. You have to be willing to look crazy because you know what God has shown you, or you're connected to a visionary that is showing you the greatness and the goodness of the Lord. That's why if you, if you are a person of vision, that you have to stay connected to other visionaries. Don't you know, and I looked at research, research says, Stanford research says that 85% of everything you know, you learn it visually. You learn more by what you see than what you hear. That is why God wants you to talk less and do more. Let me say that again. That's why God wants you to, to do less talking and, and more doing. He wants you to be productive because we serve a productive God. We serve a God of progression, and he wants us to continue to move in the direction that he has for us. Don't you know he wants us to go from glory to glory? It is his will for our life. I was reading a book by John Maxwell, and he said something so profound. He said, we teach what we know, but we reproduce what we are. Let me say that again. We teach what we know, but we reproduce what we are. A visionary is a co-worker with God. Right? Because revelation transcends our intellect and our knowledge. And some things that God gives us, they don't make any sense to the natural mind. And some of the things that God reveals to us, it, it doesn't make sense to us naturally. But, but when you see what God is showing you and you know that he's a miracle working God, you have to move forward following vision. We can't commit ourselves to something that we can't vision. We have to envision it before we move forward toward it. Because your vision includes promise. The promise is manifested through your obedience, and every person connected to the visionary is included and involved in the same promises that God gives the visionary. That's why you got to be careful who you're connected to. That's why you got to be careful who you are, 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 are in, 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 in covenant with. Because the fulfillment of your purpose and your destiny is tied to the vision. Let me say that again. The fulfillment of your purpose and your destiny is tied to the vision. It is not good for us to be thinking in the past tense, but God is consistently doing a new thing. So we have to come to a place in our walk with God where we say, God, I just need new revelation. I need new vision. 
God. I can't see it stagnant. I can't get stuck. I can't get in a position where I can't move, God. I need you to give me fresh vision so that I can continually be moving in the direction that you have for me to move it because you are consistently doing a new thing. Isaiah 43, 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Don't you know the enemy wants to lock you in your past? But God is trying to give you a new revelation. It is not really new. It's just new to you. But God will reveal things to you in increments so that you can continue to keep, stay driven and moving forward. Vision helps you to dare to believe God in a way that you have never believed before. Because God has a way of doing things in, in a different way than you are accustomed to. But don't you know miracles are normal in the realm of the spirit? Miracles are not always normal to us because we may not we may not feel like we're seeing miracles every day, even though we are. But miracles are normal in the realm of the spirit. Here we can apprehend the fullness of Christ when we get a revelation and when we have vision. So I want to I want to come to our close, but I just want to share the scripture with you in Philippians three and thirteen. It says, "Brother, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do." Forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press. Somebody shout, get ready to press. Toward the goal of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. He wants us to be overflowing with his Holy Spirit. He wants us to have vision and revelation. God wants to share some things with you that you can't even, you feel like you're not ready for. But God is ready to download some things in your spirit. But you have to be hungry. You have to be thirsty. You have to want more of him. You have to want a revelation. You have to want vision. You have to want to see beyond what's in front of you. Because our human goals cannot compare to the fullness of vision and revelation God wants to give you. God spoke to Israel in visions and said, Jacob, Jacob, he said, here I am. God has a way of dealing with us in vision. And God may have been showing you something, even you that are watching on today. Somebody that's watching may have had dreams. And God may have been showing you things in, in, in your mind and in your spirit. And you just you just kind of like just took it lightly and didn't pay much attention to it. But I came to confirm something to you. I came to, to remind you. I came to, to spark something in you and let you know that God has been giving you vision. God has been giving you revelation. Even your leader, even someone you may be connected to have, have may have been, been, been pouring vision on you and you may not have been taking it but God is saying that this is the hour where you need clear vision and revelation from me. God at the finish line saying put your eyes on me. Let, me. let me show you something that you would want to see. Jesus said follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You have to always stay in a mode of vision God. Give me vision. Give me revelation God. I want to have a mission. I want to have something I'm going after that's, that's larger than my goals. Because my goals I can conjure up with my own aspirations and my own ambitions. But God wants to give you something greater. He wants to give you vision. So today, today on this on this Sunday service, this virtual service that that, that we have, and we had to, we are blessed to be able to come together by way of, of the internet. I just want to share this word with you, and I believe that God has given me this word just for you to let you know that God is, is, is giving you vision, and God is connecting you with vision, and God just wants to show you something. He wants to, he wants to reveal some stuff to you that, that may, it may have, shouldn't have been, it should have been obvious before, but for some reason you couldn't see it. You may have been overwhelmed with the, with the challenges of life and the troubles that we have to deal with from day to day to day but I want you to just take, take a moment and, and just begin to meditate on the Lord and allow him to download some vision, get in connection
connection with visionaries. Get into co covenant relation with, with leaders that have vision and begin to grab hold of the vision and begin to move in the direction that God has for you. God is dealing with somebody even now and God is touching you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. You can feel his presence and you know that he is doing something miraculous in your life. He is doing something that you have never experienced before. He is doing a new thing and I want you to embrace it. I want you to hold it. I want you to move forward in vision. For this is your hour. This is your time. And I want to pray with you now and I want to pray that God would just touch you with his finger of love that he would minister to you in the way that you need to be ministered to, that he would get to the core of your issues and your, and your dilemma, and that he would touch that very place that needs to be touched and do something miraculous in your life. I'm praying that God would take the veil off of your eyes, that you would receive vision. And no matter how he chooses to do it, as long as you've been able to see past your circumstance and see him. That's all that matters. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are watching now, and I pray, Lord God, that you would give them revelation and give them vision in these days that we are experiencing, Lord God. I pray that they'll be able to see past the turmoil and the challenges and the trouble and the issues of life, Lord God, and they will see what you are doing in the midst of it all, that they will see that you are still a miracle-working God, that they will see in the realm of the Spirit that you are constantly Consistently and consistently doing miracles. Do it for them now in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord God, that even now that you would spark something in the life of your people, Lord God, that they will begin to run after the thing that you have shown them. And they will be a recipient of your promises in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Lord God. We give you praise, honor, and glory that belongs to you. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We honor God for you. We thank God for you able to tune in on today. And we want you to continue to follow us on our page at Faith Family Church. Uh, join us every Sunday at 3 p.m. for our virtual worship experience. And we look forward to seeing you on next week as well. God bless you and have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Take care. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, because he is good. I don't know about you, but the worship blessed me. The word of God blessed me. The prayer blessed me. I am leaving encouraged today. I am leaving motivated to do the works of God. But now at this moment, we have our offering where you can give. The Bible says that if you give unto God, he will give it back to you. Press down, shaken together. Running over shall it run into your cup. So I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is going to do. So if you want to give this in our comments, you see our Givelify, our Cash App, our church website. So I hope you are blessed by the service, and God bless you.